Hi, and welcome to Derech Eretz, The Way of the World, SABC 2's new Jewish magazine show. I'm your host, Romy Stach. Over the coming months, we will be exploring Jewish values from the Torah that impact society and the way people themselves treat others and the world at large. Assuming the role of leadership is not always an easy task and often requiring humility, tolerance, and conviction. Perhaps the defining character trait of a leader is someone who is willing to take responsibility, someone who is willing to step up to the plate because the job needs to be done. This most certainly has been the case with the biblical Moses. Professor Michael Rudolph and Mike Abel, who all feature in today's show. Moshe Rabbeinu, or Moses, is constantly portrayed as not only caring and concerned for others, but also willing and ready to act upon those feelings. When he saw his people were in trouble or a job that needed to be done, he acted. He took responsibility, even at risk to his own life. Jonathan Mach elaborates further on the concept of leadership. Leadership is not about an institution or a corporation or a country or whatever. If you have an impact on someone else, that is leadership. That is leadership and uh, it's taking responsibility as well. So the, in the Torah there's this, this, this strange story that Moses, when he was a young man, he saw an Egyptian striking an Israelite and he killed the an Egyptian. And he looked here and he looked there. And it's not that he saw no one. What he saw was no one was showing moral responsibility to stop it. So he stepped up to take responsibility. And that is leadership. Leadership is about taking responsibility perhaps when others aren't and you've got those skills to deal with it. Taking the risks, you might be wrong. So leadership um, is, is not a complex. I mean, Warren Bennis, who the greatest theorist ever, died recently at the age of 89, and he was still lecturing at 89, and he, he basically said that leadership is what's the right thing to do. Management is doing things right. So leadership is, you can be anyone. What is the right thing to do? You know, what is the right thing to do? And uh, that, of course, has to fit in with your own value system. So I was discussing this with somebody at a Shabbat table, this idea of leadership and bringing in value systems and differentiating a shame from a guilt kind of culture. And he said he was once in Cape Town, he was walked from Musenberg to, to Fishhook, and um, Along, along the road, and uh, when they got to Fishhook, it was very hot, and they decided to catch a train back, which they've never done before. And they went to the office to buy, which cost them about two or three rand. It was very cheap, three stations. And the man behind the counter said, "You know what? Just go for free, as long as you're not caught. As long as you're not caught." But I'm very pleased that this good friend of mine and his daughter took the guilt approach and paid the four rand. Because it wasn't a matter of being caught or not. It's the right thing to do. That what Benna says, what is the right thing to do in this situation? Moses had to save the Israelites who has been beaten terribly. He stood up. That was the right thing to do at that moment. And there's many, many aspects in the life, thousands, millions of aspects we deal on a daily basis where we have to step up to the plate as we're, and show leadership. It might not make the news, it might not be a book, it might be no movie in it, but there's, don't worry, there are plenty of times where one needs to say, this is the right thing to do, provided you are having this guilt mechanism, which is your own internal values, not what others will say. Many times you don't do it or ought not to do it because other people will say, wow, you do it because it's the right thing to do. And all gathers up and you lead a much more authentic, richer life. At 
a personal audience with the modern-day Jewish sage, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, in 1981, influenced and became a source of guidance on how Professor Michael Rudolph lives his life. The Rebbe believed in investing in and enabling people to grow and develop, something that Michael has been mindful of in various leadership roles. Within the Siakane Initiative, he has used this influence to create leaders and not followers. I was originally in the Department of Public Health Dentistry or Community Dentistry and that allowed me to be exposed to many communities in South Africa, rural, urban, peri-urban, um, right throughout the country, taking our students, doing research and I got to understand people in the communities. And as a result of that, and in finding out their difficulties and, of course, their assets. About 12 to 13 years ago, it was obvious that food insecurity was a major issue. And sort of coming back to the way I was raised by my mom and dad in terms of the value system of giving back to people. And when you see a problem, it's not a matter of walking away, but trying to find a solution in addressing that problem. I'm, I'm sure that that was an inherent value system that um, initially that my mom and dad had passed on to me of, of working with people, of assisting people, of addressing their problems, of finding ways to build and enable people to reach their full potential. And so I came across the idea of urban food gardens. And so I approached Joburg City and I explained to them the problem. And happily they responded very positively and said, let's do a mapping exercise. And we had a look at various parks around Joburg City that was fairly close to the inner city. And we came across the Sadenlot Park. And they allocated this almost hectare of land for us to have an integrated food garden which would be uh, used to grow food but also to demonstrate and to show people how to grow their own food and therefore to build capacity and to empower people to do that. <laughs> My first first day when I started to work here in Sakana I was not serious about working in a garden so and then I sat down alone at home and then I said no man let me put my heart here in Sakana. I start to be serious and then I start to be focused so like I learned lots of things here. Today there is a, an incredible um, realization and importance of mentorship and of coaching, of reinforcement, of support for the people who you are training and coaching. And I've seen this from real experience that particularly taking into account the educational background of the farmers who we, with whom we're working here, but I want to emphasize that even at a university level, that the mentorship and coaching is equally important rather than the, um, the distant supervision that one provided for students in the past. And um, we have seen the, the results of that um, interaction because by mentorship, it's not a matter of just sharing knowledge, it's getting to know the person or the people or the communities, understanding who they are. And with that realization, you can impart knowledge, experience, share whatever you've learned, lessons learned, much more effectively once you get to know who you're dealing with. And that's such a key aspect. I learned very important things. The first thing he started to teach me is for me to be loyal. He is teaching me to have patience, he, to work even with limited resources. You have to try to, to be productive with the limited resources you have. You have to be patient, you have to be lenient, and you have to be hardworking. And you have to be, you have to seek, see other opportunities which are behind you, which you cannot see, but you have to look for them and find them.
There are millions of people now um, needing food in the, in the urban environment and their access to um, affordable, nutritious food is limited. And so what we want to do is to bring food that is close to where people live and work that is nutritious. And there are roofs such as this, and if you look across the uh, inner city, there are huge uh, amount of space that can be effectively utilized. So what we see here is a compost and a soil based system, but the tunnels all have a hydroponic system, which is very important because it, it reutilizes the water. So it's about 90% water efficient. So whatever we have done here, we have trained the ladies that you see here and the gentlemen to be able to actually construct the tunnels, every aspect of the tunnels, how to grow uh, the plants, how to actually mix the nutrients in the various tanks, how to regulate it so every single aspect has been um, taught to them and very importantly they've also had a course in entrepreneurship and running a small-scale business. When they invited us they say it's an urban farming training so we came here with the mind that we're going to learn how to to to, to farm differently than the convention one. And it was not only the training about farming, it was also about business, like training us as entrepreneurs. And then along the line, we wrote our exams. After graduation, they said, now it's only, we're going to elect six people to be the part of the team. Along the line, they say, now you guys, you are fit to be we have grown enough to be a, a cooperative. Now you must register. That was from the city of Johannesburg, that now you must register as a co-op. Co and then we registered. They, thereafter, they told us, this is your business. You must take care of it. This is how we want to change the life of the inner city community. What they've learned is to, you know, take greater responsibility, to, to behave like a mensch, and what that means is to speak to one another respectfully and while the technical aspect of mulching or digging or planting, harvesting, uh, packaging, se selling etc etc are obviously uh, are, are key aspects, there are um, just other kinds of, of value systems and, and understanding one's culture and background which is so important. What kind of a society will have in future if our children, they don't take education serious? Because they have to take education serious. We are looking at the future leaders from them. Now us, we must lead them. We must lead them with, by example that you cannot do anything if you don't want to listen, if you don't want to learn. If you don't want to be coached, if you don't want to be advised, you cannot go anywhere with life. We are the living example. At, as, as I'm aging now at this age, but I still want something to do, producing new things in my life. I'm always telling my grandchildren that I'm doing this for you, so that you will know in life you cannot get older to, to learn. My interpretation of um Derek Heritz is, is behaving in that moral and ethical way, of behaving in a, a responsible way, of ensuring that um, one's relationships with, with one's husband or wife, with one's family, with one's parents, with one's teachers, with one's fellow workers, is uh, carried out in a very respectful and understanding way, respecting diversity, respecting cultural changes, respecting all of those aspects. And um, not least of all, um, Derek Heritz can also be um, translated as earning a living because then it gives one respect and self-esteem and you're not always recipients. So it has got a lot of meaning. And in the same way as that we know um, in Judaism that there are 613 different commandments uh, that one has to fulfill. But Derek Eretz is not one of those, but it's certainly the mortar that holds those commandments together and enables us 
to fulfill them uh, with more meaning. And therefore, you know, if one has to have a meaningful life, irrespective of your station or position in life, that um, behaving like a mensch, behaving in a respectful way and with decency and speaking to people like that, I think just enriches everybody, not only yourself and the people that you're working with, but the entire community. Winner of the Financial Mail Agency Leader of the Year in 2006 and recognized as one of South Africa's advertising and communications leaders, Mike Abel established MNC Saatchi Abel in 2010. It is credited as the fastest growing advertising agency in the history of South Africa. Mike believes that leadership consists of action rather than position. He attributes his managerial success to knowing his business from the bottom up rather than from the top down and in creating an environment that attracts and nurtures talent. So I come from Port Elizabeth. Uh, I am a PE boy. Uh, both my parents are from Port Elizabeth. Uh, my wife, Sarah, her parents are also from Port Elizabeth. So I think it's quite unique that my three boys' grandparents, all four of them come from PE and both parents as well. Uh, so it's thick in our blood. And, uh, and I love the value system of the Eastern Cape. I grew up in a home where um, I guess uh, conscience was very important. I grew up in a home that was uh, kind of first generation after the Holocaust. Uh, so you learn about hate and you learn about intolerance and you learn about you know, equality. So for me in terms of leadership, um, a matter of conscience has always been important. Doing the right thing no matter what. There's never been a choice. I've always thought that you have to stand up for what's right and for what's decent. So I have a violent intolerance of intolerance. Anything that equates to a dislike of the unlike, anything that equates to any form of uh, discrimination or racial hatred, depending on people's religion, race, sexual orientation, any of the like, um, I respond very badly to that and I'm very outspoken about that. During apartheid, um, I had spotted this opportunity to advertise uh, on the back window of black taxis using Contravision. So I went down to the taxi ranks, met the guys, started my company, which was called Glass Ads, in partnership with Uncleador, which is the Black Taxi Association in PE, the leading one, and, uh, and it was a great success. And so right from the get-go, um, I, I was a part of transformation in South Africa and black business. Uh, in South Africa and when um, I was co-leading the Ogilvy Group in South Africa I was one of the leadership team that uh, led the transformation to them being a majority black owned agency and when I started MNC Saatchi Abel in South Africa right from the get-go we were majority owned in South Africa by black South Africans mostly working in the company. A couple of years ago when the company grew in Gauteng Mike gives me a phone call to say we see each other in the industry, but I think there's an opportunity for us to work together. Typical was, well, maybe not. Um, we sit down for one cup of coffee, and here we are three years later. We hire a partnership. We run this particular business as partners, uh, how he keeps the team together. We're part of our worldwide network of uh, more than 30 markets where we work with entrepreneurs from different parts of the world how he manages those relationships. There's a thing that comes to mind when I think Mike, integrity. So we are the only agency in the global network to have the local founder's name next to MNC Saatchi. And uh, I guess that's a very big uh, tribute to me and to my partners in South Africa. So although it is my surname, I think it's representative of, uh, of our partner model. 
So I've structured our company much more like a, a law firm or an accounting firm or an architectural practice where it's a rectangle, where, we, where I happen to be the senior partner in the company, but where we have a lot of partners and founders. Um, so it is a much broader structure in terms, of, uh, in terms of the team. Mike is a person who believes in people. He trusts his people and he sets them kind of free to be uh, as good as, as he knows them to be. And he doesn't put restrictions on you. So you almost exceed your own uh, personal limitations to try and find where that ceiling is, uh, where he's positioned you in his own head. And you, you naturally go beyond yourself and achieve things that you actually didn't know you could. There's a wonderful quote, which is, a candle loses no light by lighting another candle. And I would equate that to my leadership style in terms of being able to um, share whatever I can with people, help them grow, nurture their careers and to do well with the agency. When new people start, uh, he writes this uh, book we call the High Fly Book and we, we present everyone, the new starters, with a, a welcome pack. And he'll write a little note to each one. Um, and when they, they come in on the first day, he'll go to them and greet them and make them feel special. He has that uh, open door policy. Um, no matter how busy he is, he'll, he'll stop and talk. There are many uh, shareholders in the company beyond me that, uh, that have all done very well um, out of starting the company with me and joining it along the way. And will continue to do so. I ended up going overseas after working with Mike in South Africa. I joined an agency over there and obviously kept in touch with Mike. And very interestingly, when uh, he, he, he kind of put the plans together for the agency that it is to, that you see today, he talked to us about um, this great partnership and great friends coming back together again, which I think talks to Mike's um, absolute ability to bring people together that um, he really respects and who are his mates, ultimately. My ambition I guess the reason I get up in the morning is I've always believed in the philosophy of tikkun olam, or certainly as an adult I have, in terms of being a light unto the world. And I don't want to overstate that because I think many people do amazing things in the world, but I deliberately wanted to, to make a change in society, have always tried to do that. So we are involved in a multitude of uh, initiatives for good. We call it the MNC Saatchi Able Foundation and, uh, and we call it initiatives for good. And I think that uh, people shouldn't stand back from finding their voice and from making a difference to society. And, and we are in a position to help so much in South Africa that even the smallest things can make a meaningful difference. In Pirkei Avot, Ethics of Our Fathers, Rabbi Hillel says, in the place where there is no man, strive to be a man. A leader is not necessarily only someone who has all the appropriate talent in place for the job at hand. A leader is usually someone who sees the job at hand and does something about it, who recognizes that the task is crucial and no one else is doing it. We would love for you to be part of the conversation. So share your views and stories on our Facebook page at Spirit Sister Productions Network. From me, Romy Stach, and the Derek Eretz team, we wish you a wonderful and fruitful week ahead.